here we go. Hopefully everybody read that, by the way. Did everybody read that? <coughs> um, so we're gathered here May 8th, and we do have a couple new guests today. Tim and Bob, stand up. Where's Tim? All right. Hey, Bob. Yay! Wait, wait, no, no, no. no stand up. Um, Tim, has, have you were here before, right? I was a member maybe 10, 15 years ago. Okay, yeah. good. Welcome back. I'll charge you extra, Bob. That's right. There we go. <laughs> so, so this is Bob. Bob, what's your full name? No, Garrett. Okay, and Bob brought his... He showed up. They, these guys are sitting here at 6.30 tonight with their membership forms and their yeah. money uh, all ready to go, and Doug sucked them right up. Be prepared. So, all right, so no, welcome here. Um, Bob, you, uh, Hale, do you, do you still, are you still actively woodworking, or are you just like watching people uh, work? Uh, no, I, I, uh, I moved to Florida and came back about six months ago. Okay. And I'm in Seabrook, and I'm helping out with the wood shop at Seabrook. Uh, they just moved to a new facility. They got a dust collector for sale if anybody's interested in a big two bag dust collector. Uh, have a lot of good time. What is Great. Seabrook? Good time. Retirement community. Wh where is Seabrook? What is Seabrook? the question? Hinton Falls is a retirement community. Oh, okay. okay. Do they room. have a shop there? Yep. Oh. yep. All of a table saw, you name it. High end stuff. Huh. Well, is that available for yeah. other homeowners? <laughs> 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 I'll take it right away. Guests can't use the equipment. <laughs> okay. No, we'll, we'll talk about it. But no, I'm just curious. And also post, uh, take some cards, post our membership okay. cards in the in that wood shop because a lot of those members might be I'm sure. perfect. I'm sure. Um, uh, so that would be great. Well, nice, uh, nice seeing you back, Bob. And this is Tim. What's your last name, Tim? No, Gara. It's my brother. Oh, okay. All right. And we're, do you, uh, you, uh, you kind of actively in the woodworking? Or? Yes, actively in the woodworking. Bob is a former industrial arts teacher beside being Red Bank principal years ago, so I've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many of that stuff over the years, we've worked together and done things together, and I finally set up my own shop. Great. Cool. Great. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome here. Thank you. And any new uh, other members? Everybody's here? Okay, good. Um, so uh, these guys are paid up. You don't have to worry about it. So thank you for being a student on that. And, and bring your dues. We need we need the money to keep our stuff going. Everybody, please always wear your badge so we know your name. Um, let me see. We do have a library. Jim, our librarian's been keeping it up. We found what did we find, Jim? Uh, Schwartz Anarchist Design Book. Right. And where's where's uh, where's Rob? Oh, there you are. He was because that. Thank you, by the way. I read the I, I skimmed the back, but I read the beginning. It's quite interesting. That quote that you saw was from that book. It was kind of interesting. So. Um, Jim brought in uh, VHS tapes, right? Well, uh, we, uh, Walter ripped some uh, VHS tapes to DVDs, but I can't locate those DVDs. Well, they're, they're not, are they in the basement of the building? I, I'll look again, but I didn't see them last time, so. Uh, so the club so, has a lot of DVDs. Uh, I don't know, 15 maybe? Oh, okay. The list I think was in the 30s. Oh, 30s, yeah. I've yeah. got about 15 of them I left on my PC when yeah. I was doing it. Frank, do, they, do you have them on your shelves too? They may have them in the basement in the box. Okay. Uh, I remember I'll, packing a bunch of them into a box. Okay. I'll, look, I'll look again. Maybe. All right, cool. Right. And of course, we have our tool library, but you guys don't need tools because you've got all the tools you need. <laughs> but if you do, we have, we have some tools available. And business cards are in the back, ladies and gentlemen, um, if they, they usually are. But uh, if you need one, you take some and you hand them out, make you look important. Um, Camp Quality is coming up August 6th. Don't forget, I got my little, I remember what I built last year, and I keep it downstairs like a little baggie, and I brought that out and see what I need. And we're going to get some of that tonight, uh, some wood needed for that project. So the reminder that please bring in our projects. Uh, we have a group, got a great group of guys, about a half dozen, that do this every year on a regular basis, and we thank them for their work and efforts. Um, but bringing your projects, and I think this worked out good last year. We brought our projects in last year and boxes. Box them up nice and, uh, and, and secure the boxes so it makes it easy us to handle. We'll store them in the basement or at uh, one of the members' houses, actually, and make it so it's easy uh, to transport and secure. And that way, when they get to the camp quality, they can open it up. And uh, just a reminder, uh, make sure when you make your little kits uh, for the children that they have well-written instructions. Assume that they know nothing. As a teacher, you got to remember, you look at the faces and you think, the child knows nothing. So, like step one, step two. And you make it plain and simple, uh, something that's easy to do. Uh, well-written instructions uh, to work 
and that makes it easy. Any other suggestions? The challenge is, is our members have to teach the kids how to do it, so you have to make it especially simple. <laughs> <laughs> so anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. I'm being a wise ass, but the truth is sometimes <laughs> Frank's shaking his head. Yeah, we've all got different skills, and even with this, we all, many of us learn some things, so it's really worthwhile. We've got right now, by the looks of it, 142 projects wow. committed or made, which is really, really great. Tissue boxes, toolboxes, birdhouses, uh, train whistles, uh, note boards, um, you know, the erasable pen, um, cell phone holders, keepsake boxes, um, note holders, um, uh, stools or benches, whatever you want to call them. And noisemakers. Um, if anybody, yeah, they should be. <laughs> the counselors are going to love us by the time camp's over. Um, if, <laughs> it's for the parents. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anybody has some brilliant ideas of some other projects that can, any that somebody else can build or you can build yourself. I mean, if you got a good idea, we'll find somebody to build it. So don't be shy if you don't have time to do it. Um, so you know, just. Let me know, let Frank know, uh, Walter, uh, Bob, um, 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 Cook, a bunch of guys that go every year. And between us, we'll get it all done. This is a sign-up board. Um, so right now, we've got uh, six guys committed, and, and I... Oh, that's not, excuse me, that's not your current inventory. That's what was promised. Well, the inventory is on here. Well, some of it's current, some of it's <coughs> promised. Okay. I... I only would question one or two of them, so mm -hmm. if we come up to 122 instead of 142, we'll be okay. We'll do 70, 80, 80. Well, we're, we're cooking to do 70, 80 projects in two hours, so we're in good shape there. Where we're not in good shape is more original ideas that the kids haven't done before, because some of these kids are repeats. So if you can, please help with that. Also, I'm going to pass this around. Um, it looks a little confusing. I did it at the last minute, but if you're gonna, if you want to work, it's August 6th. We get there around 9, 9:30. We start working with the kids at 10. We're done at 12, and head for the diner and to cool off a little bit. Uh, but if you can work or you can't make any projects, put your names down and um, pass that back over. Thank you, you, Bill. Put you down here, Frank. Thank you, Bill, and all the guys that Thank help you. out on August 6th with that. Bob, before you get started, just a note. So I sent out an email about the pine the club was able to just recently purchase. Not on the heading you on that. Through an estate. Oh, you got something on that? All right. Of course. All right, all right. So anyway, <laughs> my truck's backed up right in front of the building here. And um, I got the ones I have are uh, one by ten by six foot lengths. So, you know, depending on how good your car is, you could probably still get a six-foot length in there. But anyway, please take some of this and, you know, put it to good use as far as the projects. And I only brought about half of what we have, so. Say if we have a project coming in for their own personal use next year, like a cupboard, <coughs> and it's all white pine, what do we do? Be very suspicious. <laughs> um, we got about 960 linear feet of 1 by 10 pine. So. <clears throat> it was a good, it was a good deal, and it's really in relatively good pine. So, yeah. um, anyway, it's there for the taking. So please take it. And your truck is right out in front, right, right in the driveway. Yeah. So yeah. break or on the way yeah. out, yeah. pick some up. Yeah. Yeah. Is it boxed in the back, or we just, yeah, just sit the there? Right, cool. Cool. The Great. squirrels are looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can already see that there's not as much sap as the wood I had last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't don't even go there. With this. Yeah. <laughs> you should see my planer after I used your wood. I, it's oh, for God. charity, you know. It's for yeah. kids. Uh, hand plane seminar. I'm excited about this. We just added somebody else. I do want to do a roll call. Um, very excited about uh, this uh, seminar that we haven't done in. In, I don't know when the last time a club did an actual seminar, so you know me, I'm into the education thing. So um, I've been studying and practicing myself to help Brian. Um, so this is going to be May 18th, just as a reminder, from 9 to 12 we will be out. And Anthony's going to take us all out for lunch afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> no. I am asking um, the, for the cost of the building uh, for a $20 donation, if you don't mind. Uh, just bring a $20 bill with you up there and we'll collect it and we'll give it to the... Uh, uh, fellow that has the uh, building um, and I think it's actually a bargain for what you're going to get for three hours I've been working on the packet to go along with this a lot of information and uh, Brian and I are collaborating on this and he'll be the lead
teacher. If you're not familiar with Brian, uh, I did a class with him uh, one on one and a uh, very uh, nice instructor and uh, in his shop and he has, he's very meticulous, um, very careful craftsman. But here's who we have and uh, just let me know if you're here, Michael uh, Britton, here, uh, not here, Scott Fulmer. I'm here. Okay. I'm a maybe. You're a go, right? I'm a maybe. You're I'm a maybe. maybe. All right. Because I need a head count because there are so many, so many tables available. Brendan. Yeah. A go? A go. Cool. All right. Joe Ferraro? No, yeah, I'm here, but no, I can't make the 18. No. Okay. Um, Frank? Yep. Bodner? Yes. Yes. All right. Anthony? I'll be there. Yes. Jerry Spoonberg? He said put him down, but his question mark. I'll have to call him up. Jim Braun? Yes, I'll be there. Yes. All right. David Tarantino? Here? Not here? Okay. George Forbes? Maybe. Not here. All right. I'll call him. Uh, Bush Josie? These, some of these people don't attend uh, the meetings, but he... Oh, he said he was going to bring a membership for him. Uh, um, does that sound familiar? No, no, no. Not to send anything in yet? All right. Me and we got Dave Pergman is coming. Anybody else that wants to be added to the list? Lance? Yeah. All right, because what I'm going to do is we have so many spots open at this building, and what we don't have, I'm going to tell Bruce Hogan, the owner of the building, okay, he can fill it up with his students. But I want you guys to have the... Uh, first dibs on that. All right. Anybody else want to be in? May 18th. All right. You can let me know before you leave tonight when you think about it because whatever spots we don't have, I'm going to let Bruce know the book on that tomorrow. Um, it should be good. Uh, if you have a hand plane, uh, uh, bring it. If you don't have one, you can use mine or just, just if you never use one. It's a good place to start, learn, see what they do. And if you, even if you're uh, experienced, learn how to sharpen it better, some ideas we could share, and then uh, actually finally, with time left, we'll be uh, using actually using a plane and things like that. And it's a tool that we can always, I don't care how much experience of guys, we can always learn something, right? Mm -hmm. There's always something we find out. Just have a question. Yes. So we're bringing a plane, if you have a plane. Like sharpen and tune it up and set yeah. it up. And preferably like a standard, like a bench plane, nothing like like a rabbit plane, please. <laughs> just if you have a standard bench plane, uh, four or five, you know, just bring that. That's just one plane because we want time to go through your whole thing. But we'll help you at least adjust and tune up and set up the chip breaker, which I learned a lot this past couple of weeks just adjusting the chip breaker. And I thought, what a difference in the results. So all that stuff. Um, Sharpening stones. And yeah, yes, good idea. Sharpening stones. If I mention that in the in the website, if you have sharpening stones, whatever you got, bring it. All right, and put it in a little case. And each person will have one workbench, and, and or no, we'll one on each side. Um, Bruce, the instructor, is going to set up dogs and have them all ready for us because it's it's not a workbench like we have. It's kind of like a tabletop thing uh, at appropriate height, and he'll set up the dogs and have them ready to go. Any other questions on that? All right, cool. Um, Next, I uh, want to move this through this quick. Um, I've been having a friend asking me, what, are you going to order or not? Uh, I know it's been a while. Uh, Club gear, I have a shirt on now. I don't know if anybody else is wearing their shirts. I have All right. a hat on. All right, there I'm we go. My hat. So anybody new, or there you go. Um, if we, uh, she said we could do, I'm just thinking of the standard ones, uh, a short sleeve polo, a long sleeve polo, uh, and caps are the three ones. And believe it or not, if you want boxers, no, no boxers. you can monogram them right across the front. No. <laughs> Um, but anybody, all right, if, if I order, she well, says okay. it would make wise to order like 12 it, it, to make it worth it because you pay a setup fee and obviously you order 12. So she could do 12 hats and 12 shirts. Now, Scott, what, what about a shop apron? They have aprons, but they, I looked at the aprons and were like cooking aprons. I don't know, like, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't have enough like places to put pencils and tools, so. Uh, but I, actually, I want to make an apron for turning with kind of leather. But so I, I mean, if if I did this now, we can we'll keep the inventory. We're, we wouldn't sell them. I don't know how you guys did it before. Well, you get to pay pay first and then pick up your pick up your because piece. you got to have specific sizes too. You know, for sure. Okay. So, so how many people? Because we can do that. I mean, seriously. Okay, if we do this and I can take an inventory list on June, I know I need a new long sleeve and mine's getting kind of ratty. How many people? Just show of hands. How many people would buy a shirt or a cap? 
All right. Seriously. Okay. So it makes it worthwhile to order a set of each. And what we don't sell, we'll keep like a standard size, a large of each, and then maybe send a sign up sheet around. Yeah. yeah. That way, we don't have any inventory. Left. Would that be the best way? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll do I'll do a sign up yeah, sheet for absolutely. June, and then they'll be ready for you guys back in September. How's that sound? Yeah, All right. You know, uh, being a, being frugal here. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe you ought to put the money up front. Yeah. 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 All right, so what I'll do then, give me more work, Doug. So I, I'll call her back. She can give me the exact price. I have to send her a picture of this. And then she'll give me the exact price, and she's giving me like almost the whole which cost to her. And um, she owes me. So uh, the thing is, I'll get that, the prices, and then I'll have the form, and you guys can fill like cap, $15, or right. whatever. And then we can, yeah. all right. You so know, I'll Bob, make a sign up. For uh, Bob, our, our bylaws say the newest member gets to be assigned as the chair of that project. Aha! <laughs> 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 uh -huh. And who is the newest member? It's now back from Florida. Uh -huh. They're looking for things to do now, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you include any colors that are available? Well, we did. Do you like this? We did the yeah, standard light gray right. with the black. I think it looks attractive. Or no? I see. A, I mean, do you want turquoise? I, no, I see a rust-colored cap here. Yeah. Oh, so you, did you alter offer? We offered, and if you picked your color and your size and you paid in advance, you that's what that. showed up. Okay, good. Thanks for bringing that up. And by the way, t-shirts are not a bad option, too, because yeah. you know, a lot of people don't necessarily want to... Oh, a collar. A little dressier, don't you think? Uh, I think it's just, just a question of what you want to work in. Bob, yeah. question, question? Yes. Hi. Uh, on a, yeah. <laughs> um, as I remember... Well, we've done this in the past. We've basically taken orders and filled them. So that we, yeah. So we want to get away from. Have an inventory. inventory. No inventory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. inventory. In other words, you're trying to get away from inventory. They get lost. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Then we'll do that. And if we have enough, then we'll go for it. All right, cool. If you can send a rep. Uh, and then you can offer order. If you yes. Send an email with what you're going to have and prices, then we can have. Value. Well, that that will be forthcoming in the next two weeks. I'm going to call her tomorrow uh, after I work, and then. Um, I'll have something, look for the CJ, you know, the Google group stuff, it'll be on there. So it goes out to everybody. Club, it'll have club gear. So guys, just be on alert for that. Don't let it go to spam. All right, um, this is a picture of Mark's group bill. I heard why this has just come back to me. 11 people signed up. Best year ever. Thank you, everybody. Yes. All right. Good job. Um, Mark's group bill, these guys, now, they're... That was your last meeting, but they should all have their projects ready by. We're going to do a uh, rollout or whatever it is in September. September. Because I'm not going to be here in June, so uh, we're going right. to do it in September. All right, cool. So Can that is the group bill. Out. And they built the uh, splay lab table, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, each member will have their table here, right, Frank? We'll see. So, <laughs> this, so, so that table, you know, it's small, Website but there's a lot going on with it because the legs are all tapered and splayed. So, yeah, that's good. Um, so, and then we're looking for new group builds. Uh, did you draw up anybody? Because fall, we should have a new group build. Uh, yeah, definitely. but yeah, no. And I think um, I am. Matt Greco. Yeah. Where's Matt? Yeah. Matt, you're going to do group build, I heard. Yeah, new bar. <laughs> I'm doing one. You are, Matt. Oh, Matt's going to do a trestle table. He uh, talked about and everything. So maybe I uh, could start that in the fall and have that yeah. already. We're going to do it over the summer, actually. Okay. So June, I'll have a sign-up sheet. I can take four or five people, and we'll meet uh, four or five times over the summer. Oh, so that's coming up shortly then. Yeah. All right, good. So yeah, and and if you have like a, a Matt, if you have a picture of what you want to build, okay. shoot it. And I'll put it in the slides. And you can talk about it a little bit in June. So. There we go. Um, shop tours. Maybe we could see that shop that you're working at in that retirement community. And if you take pictures, you can bring it in and regale us with our, you know, what you have in there. And we always welcome anybody that we have in the shop we haven't seen. Um, any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the good of the club? Scott? So, uh, as you all know, uh, we've been doing the barbecue at my house for the last two years. And I announced that I am not doing the barbecue this year. So I was curious if anybody would like to step up and have an opportunity to host the barbecue. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, but I, I don't want to hog this. I like to pass it on to somebody else. So um, come talk to me, and uh, we'll try to help you get that going, okay? All right. Thank you, Scott, for the, the times you did that. And um, regarding that, if there's anybody that wants to host it, they can. Don't feel like you have to because 
I know not a lot of people are traveling, myself, and, and we can't attend. But if anybody wants to step up and, or do that, and even if it's only a handful of guys, that's your, totally your option. Any questions on that? Okay. I just have another comment. Yes. Real quick. There's some gardening books and uh, wiring books over there that are free for the paper. Oh, yeah. Jim Cleaver at the library. I don't know how a gardening book got in there, but... <laughs> no. It's a Taunton book. Okay. <laughs> One uh, announcement. Yes, Scott. Um, sorry, tomorrow Willard Brothers is having a slab sale. Ooh. Do you know what kind of percentage off? Because I was a actually lot. seven. Oh, well, seventy percent. Yeah. Seven. Make, it, make it about right. But on top of that, <laughs> they they always give club members a ten percent discount. On top of that, so you're you're saying seventy? Well, it probably depends on the slab. It depends on the slab, and and I think also some of their imported boards as well. Really? Check out the no, that's nice to know because I was just there this past week and I, their prices were high. It starts tomorrow, several days long. They were, to me, really too high. Sorry about that. At least that's what they, I got last week. And if you are members, remember we get a 10% discount from the members. 7%. Seven. Seven. I was there uh, three weeks ago. Marty, and they only gave you 7%? I can't they talk said to they right redid now. all the prices. Now it's only 7%. Really? Why don't you give me a call tomorrow night? Another reason not to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's over the pricing. Wilbur? Yeah, so if you oh, go, that's right. So if you go to Willard Brothers and get your 7% off, plus whatever else they're getting for a slab. Um, a friend of mine gave me a couple sets of these. Um, these legs. Um, I've got one set that are about the size to make the coffee table if you put a slab on top of it, and another that's uh, more like the dining room table um, height that and one, somebody already walked off with one of them. But I looked it up, and on Rockler, these things are uh, $36 a set. So I figured um, uh, if, we, if uh, you want to make a $15 donation to the club, um, you can grab these. So that's going to be more than you can get off at Rockler, even on clearance and with the <laughs> online coupon. <laughs> free, free shipping. Free delivery. Yeah, free so free delivery. And you get tax deductions. Scott already got a set. We have, and I made the donation. We have two sets yeah, left. So one short. One coffee table size and one dining room table. So anybody interested, you can fight over them. They'll be right over here. Thank you very much, Wilbur, for donating and helping out the club on that. Uh, it's a great thing. All you need is a slab. You can So they can go to Willard's and get their slabs. And there you go, all ready to go. So that worked out good. Um, next month we're having, don't forget if you had a, had a project uh, that is transportable, uh, small to you know decent size, and you did not show it this year, all right, you made something and you didn't present it officially, uh, please bring it in. Because next month is our annual drum roll. Member showcase. What what goes on? Any particular thing? I sometimes yeah, I don't you know, everybody just brings in their projects. We set the tables up, and we just kind of do a round robin, and everybody you know kind of that brought something in just talks a little bit about what they did and you know, a little bit about it. And it's it's nice seeing what other members are doing. And um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be something you made this year, but not but something that we haven't the group hasn't seen before. Okay. But you know, it's only as good as the number of people that bring stuff in. So really, dust off some stuff, or you know, um, between you guys got a, a full month, so start, <laughs> get down there and start cranking something out. All right. And uh, typically, that's all we basically do. We yeah. gather, and that's before yeah. we break for the summer. Um, so uh, <coughs> if you have something, bring it in, because uh, there's not much else on the agenda other than we'll have a forum for the, the shirts. And Mark will be off in the high seas with his uh, yeah. lovely wife Leslie. They'll be on their 40th wedding anniversary. All right. Nice. So, Where will you be? I mean, what part of the world? Uh, Europe. Northern Europe. Oh, uh, you want to tell us exactly? Well, I'm not even sure. She's working at Tamara. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It has nothing to do with A lot so, of boss stock. <laughs> And so uh, next month we'll have the sign-up sheet for the, uh, uh, bring your project in, sign-up sheet for the uh, club gear, and camp quality, if you have your projects ready, that's awesome. You don't have to, if they're not ready, you can still bring them in oh, any time yeah. after that. But, uh, you know, we appreciate it, and we can do them. All right, so uh, Matt is going to start off. We have his, if you, hopefully you saw the picture on the website. It's a beautiful bar uh, at a Sapili, and then Rob is going to tell us about his field trip, and then we're going to end up tonight with Mark. We'll do a... How about if we do like a break right after Robert or something like that? So are you set, Matt? I think so. Okay, now Just need this is we need to tech guys for this now. We have to get out of here. Yeah. All right. You notice how they're all jumping up? <laughs>
You need to like pull back the escape. So we close out the PowerPoint, right? Top of like his shirts. Yeah. Watch, I'm doing this. <laughs> Why do I have to say Don't it? Don't say it. Don't say it. Okay. I'm going to You're all set? Yeah. Did you bring in beverages? Let the blisters. No. No. But by the way, I was setting up. This was left here this past either couple meetings. The secretary put it over in our top of our table. Has anybody left the jacket here? Leave it over here. Oh, it's doing. I think it's go I think it's going. Yeah, you got to play something. Nice sketch up. Okay, so uh, way back in December, a friend of my daughter's uh, approached me. She saw some work that I did at my daughter's house. And she asked me if I would be interested in building a bar for them. Uh, so I'm the type of person that never refuses work. And I said, sure. So I went over to their house, and uh, they had one of those big, you know, 4,000 square foot homes. And one of the rooms was, I guess, some places call it a conservatory, a sunroom, or something, but it was on the side of the house. It was like a 15 by 25 foot room. So they showed me where they wanted the bar and I took some measurements and uh, patterned off of the bar that they had seen at my daughter's house, which I made 15 years ago. I proceeded to uh, show them the, a plan in SketchUp. And I guess most of you people are familiar with SketchUp. Uh, so they got a, a general feel for what it looked like. Now one of the challenges that I was going to have to overcome was the sheer size of it. Uh, this is about five feet. The overall length is eight feet. Uh, so it was rather massive. And I do all my work in a basement, which has an L-shaped stairway. So that even oh, adds more to it. Board. That's going the real way. Fortunately, it was going on a first floor. So after uh, going back and forth with them. I originally showed them walnut, and I gave them a price for walnut, and then I found out that walnut was not the best choice. Uh, I was going to get the bar rail from Monteith. Monteith didn't have walnut as a stock item. They wanted $200 just to set it up to run the bar rail and then they wanted an astronomical price, almost as much as I quoted them for the bar. So I had to re-educate them uh, to another wood, which we finally uh, decided on Sapili, which worked out to be really nice. So the basic design uh, was these two pieces were a basic cabinet. 32 inches high, 16 inches deep, and I just did that uh, with pocket screws and plywood. Uh, proved to be pretty easy to do. Uh, I also made a, a base for a kick plate. So I went up four inches and I went in four inches, so I had a nice kick plate and a nice platform to put this on. Uh, some of the challenges that I had with that was being that this was just a rectangle and there was no front and no back, I had to brace it up somewhere so it wouldn't rack on me. And uh, so I put in bracing top and bottom in each of the corners. As far as the uh, decorative part of the bar, I used three-quarter inch Sapili plywood and I framed it with solid plywood and then I used a, uh, a molding, which I have here, 
which gives a, a nice uh, depth, feeling of depth. Did you make the molding or did you buy it? Bought it at Monteith. I think a little less than uh, $2 a foot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the total was four sheets of plywood of Sapili and approximately 50 board feet of uh, solid four-quarter Sapili and I, I don't know how many feet of uh, the molding, but I pretty much nailed it. I only had to go back for one more piece, which was about $15 more. Uh, I got a little nervous at the end that I wanted to brace it up a little more. So basically I had to make... Okay, this is a little out of order, but here's how I cut the moldings. The tricky part about this molding is that it doesn't, it has a tendency to, to, to rock on you. So by putting this on here, that supported it, so it stayed at the angle that I wanted to cut the 45. So I cut one side, and then go to the other side, and I had a stop block. This way everything was parallel. So I got a nice uh, rectangle out of it. That makes sense to everybody? So once I cut one side, then I put a stop block on, and I was able to match the sides. Okay. Then what I was really nervous about was the top, because the top was uh, 13 inches wide, and one section was 8 feet long, and then I had a 5-foot section, and then a 2-foot section. So basically, I had to make a diagonal cut 16 inches long on an eight-foot piece on each end. And I just couldn't figure out how I was going to do that. So my first thought was to do it on a table saw. But then I said, how am I going to move that piece of wood and get a nice straight cut? Mm -hmm. Then I figured I'd try a skill saw with a guide. And then I figured the skill saw has got to be like top-notch, otherwise I'm not going to get something straight. So fortunately, a neighbor down the block from me has uh, a high-end European sliding table saw. Nice. No. <laughs> nice. Well, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> nice neighborhood. Now I know why they're so expensive. We cut that thing and it was smooth as glass when I put the two pieces together. Uh, you couldn't tell where one board started and one board ended. So, but. Uh, before that, this was a test piece, and I wanted to see that if I cut the angle and I put some uh, pocket screws in there, would that be enough to bring it together and make a nice clean joint? And it, it was. Okay, we're, so here's uh, a look at the two, mm -hmm. I guess you'd call them cabinet parts. So this one was about 68 inches, this was the five feet, and they kind of formed the nail. And this was a dead space in here, so I told them that I would make a wine rack to put in there. Uh, and then I also added a drawer here for a little bar accessories. And then I cut a hole here for a dry sink. It was uh, not going to be uh, plumb, any plumbing, so it's just a dry sink. So this was uh, this end was the two-foot section. That was the piece that I showed you before. And then I had a, a larger one on this end, and then the front was an eight-foot piece of plywood. Now oh, there's the, there's a little out of order. So here's a look. Okay, that's a little, looks a lot better here. This is a, a look at from where the bartender would stand. Again, one of the problems I had was it was so big that I couldn't put it together down in my basement. And if I brought it up to my garage, this was in the winter, if I brought it up to the garage, first of all, it was freezing. And second of all, the, gar the garage was not level. And I had no way to really be sure that everything was going to come together. So I was nightmares. <laughs> okay, and this is the other end 
This is the five foot section with two panels. And uh, Mark was very nice enough to come over and uh, help me do that with a pin nailer. We put that in. That worked really nice. Uh, as for finish, uh, I'll look, go over that. As for finish, I gave it three coats of shellac, one of my favorite uh, finishes. Then I rubbed that out, and then I gave it uh, a, a wax. And that was for anything that was below the bar level. I felt that uh, it really wasn't necessary to, to put any other protection on it. So far, there's been no complaints. <laughs> been a week. <laughs> okay, this is a, a shot of the finished piece where, the, where we made that joint. And like I said, this is about 16 inches. And uh, it was very nice. I was super impressed with that saw. By the way, I asked the guy if he had to go to school to figure out how that thing worked because there were outriggers on it, there were extension things, and he had to climb under stuff. And uh, an incredible piece of machinery. So now this is a this is a shot looking down, and this is the top. And in order to put the bar rail on it, you have to have an overhang. Because that's what's going to support the, the rail that you put your arm on. Mm -hmm. It overlaps the, this part a little bit by about an inch. Matt, just hold up your example there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to show that. Okay, so here's here's the, the bar rail. This is a plywood base. The bar rail has to be supported by something. So I put a piece of plywood that spanned the whole. Uh, top. So it went from here and then it came out four inches past. I, uh, I screwed the, I finished both sides of the top and I screwed from the bottom up to hold the ceiling onto the plywood. Did you slot the screw holes? Excuse me? Did you slot the screw holes? No. no. The ceiling expands and contracts. I didn't think that uh, it was going to move on plywood. Maybe I did. Okay. Matt, the, the uh, bar uh, molding there, is that Monty? Do they, do they make that for you? It was a stock item. It's a stock item. Sapili? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. They stock Sapili, Sapili, uh, cherry, uh, poplar, and uh, maple. And the uh, the fellow there, one of the young kids, was nice enough uh, to go through every piece for me, so I could pick out something that had some really nice uh, figure to it. Mm -hmm. So this is the this would be the top. Okay. Where's the camera? Right here. Right here. Okay. This would be the top, and this is the the bar rail. Where? Okay. So that would go in there. So when you looked at it. Here's your armrest. You got a, a nice uh, top, which is solid sapili. And then I glued and screwed this so that it wasn't going anyplace. How wide was the, the sapili uh, insert of the, the bar top? Uh, yeah. 13, 14 inches. No, I did it one piece. Actually, I added. I added a little bit the part that was going under this. This overhangs a little more than an inch, so I, I wanted to make it a little deeper, so I added that and then you wouldn't see the seam. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we go back to Just the, switch uh, the uh, source again? And I'll pass this around if anybody wants to get a closer look at it. This was just a mock up That's so it. that I could be assured of what Excellent. I was doing. Your heart. <laughs> okay, and this thing was so damn heavy that uh, I assembled it up in my entrance foyer. <laughs> and then I had a support under here until I screwed the whole thing together because the plywood was done in two pieces. Hmm. And then I, once I screwed it into the top, it was pretty, it was pretty solid. <clears throat> 
then the next step was to put the uh, the bar rail on. And again, that was pretty uh, pretty challenging to get a, a nice joint in there. I also uh, put a little molding on, on the no. bar tender side just to cover up the plywood and the end of the sapili. Nice. Every, every day I would come up with something more to add to it. <laughs> so again, uh, the top I did three coats of <laughs> shellac and then I gave it three coats of uh, polyurethane mm -hmm. spray. Uh, actually, it's the same thing that Mark had recommended and then I, I rubbed it out with steel wool and wax. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was, nice. yeah, really nice. No stain or dye was necessary. Just no. The yes. Well, the, the shellac was a uh, garnet. A garnet. No, it was yeah the garnet shellac. Okay. Garnet shellac. So it had a little bit of color, and you could see the beautiful uh, <clears throat> rays in there. So I'm sorry. The the top is shellac. Three coats of shellac, and then the three coats of polyurethane. Okay. And then rubbed out with wax, and I used the wax shellac. What was the cut on the shellac? Excuse me? The cut on the shellac. Uh, two pound. Hey, Matt. So, so I mean, I know a lot of people do a shellac and then a, a polyurethane, but why, why, I mean, does it... Why? Yeah. I like the color. So you use the shellac for coloring it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, and it, it, it really get, brought out that iridescent. Uh, ribbon stripe of, of the uh, sapili. Yeah, was, was, was that a blonde shellac you using, or no? It was a garnet shellac. Oh, okay. Matt, two questions: the garnet shellac versus straight polyurethane. Would there have been much difference as far in as the, the color? Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, second question is: what did they charge you uh, for the? Uh, I think it was eleven dollars a foot. Eleven dollars a foot for the bar, for the bar, bar rail. Bar. Yeah, it's I nice. spent it's very, uh, nice. very nice. I spent approximately fifteen hundred dollars in materials. I think it was twelve hundred dollars at Monteith for the plywood. Uh, it was two pounds of shellac, or say a pound and a half, but I still had to buy two pounds of shellac at fifty dollars a pound. Uh, the sapili was one hundred and fifty dollars a sheet, mm -hmm. and I think it was six dollars a board foot for the. Uh, Sapili. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did, the, did you have to glue that up, or did you buy 13-inch boards? No, it was. Oh, it was. Uh, I only glued up under the, the, the so bar. The, board, the, so the main Sapili that's on the bar top is 13, 14 inch. Yeah, it was. It was there. And they had it. it was already yeah. Done. Yeah. yeah. Cleaned and done and ready to go. Well, not. It was thick. I had to run it through the planer and. All right. uh, yeah. Yes, and it was pretty flat, and I didn't really have that much trouble. It was beautiful to work with, mm -hmm. aside from the little bit of tear-out. Sapili is notorious for, for tear-out. Mm -hmm. the, the grain goes all different ways. I had a little issue uh, right around here. I had some, <laughs> some tear-out, and I couldn't sand or plane the bar any the top any thinner because then it wouldn't line up with the railing because the railing had to sit on three quarter there's a three quarter inch difference between the bar rail mm -hmm. and the top so uh, I found some uh, some filler that I was able to fill in the tear out and then I put a little shellac on it sanded it all out and it disappeared I asked my wife if she could find it and uh, Good. It, it was gone. And uh, a little trick I learned as being a photographer. Originally, I worked with film. And when you made a print from film, if there was any dust on the negative, when you made the print, you have a white spot. Okay. If I delivered a print and my customer saw the white spot, and I brought it back in. We used to use dyes, a little uh, artist brush, and you kind of like, almost like tattooing, and you, you kind of dab in the right color. And it was very tricky to get them not to look for it. 
So the word of caution is, if you fix it before they see it, they'll never see it. <laughs> As a filler, then? It, it, was, uh, it came in a tube, and it was over it. I got it from Home Depot. It was over in the laminate section. They had a little tube, and it really worked nice. It had a nice dark color to it. And then when I mixed a little shellac, it, it, uh, it was fine. So it was, it was like a paste or something? Yeah, it was a paste. Okay. Yeah. If you get shellac sticks the way you like to use shellac, you burn in the shellac stick, and they come in multiple colors, and then alcohol, you can just rub it right down. So That's true, too. The way too, you yeah. like sh using shellac, it's yeah. magically mohawk down. So, uh, now some of the things that I learned in doing this was, it on paper it seemed like it was going to go really easy, uh, make the, the two cabinets, screw them together, get a piece and put it on front. Uh, the challenges I had was when I put the solid wood on the plywood, it, tend, it, it bowed on me. And the trick was to to get it flat, because I was going to, uh, when the two joints came together, I was going to use pocket screws on the inside. And uh, then I panicked, and I saw that uh, the ends were bowed, the, the eight-foot plywood was bowed, and I just, like, was ready to give them their money back. Because <laughs> so I said, how am I going to overcome this little bit of a bow. Also, they were ordering a, a foot rail, which was a two-inch piece of steel, that if my front was bowed, there was no way that that was going to go on. So, uh, in hindsight, I might have opted to do it as a frame and panel, but then, if I did it as a frame and panel, when I put the panel up against the, the, uh, the cabinet, there would be a space that it would would be difficult to fill. Then I'd have to get plywood, put plywood in there, and it, it just kind of multiplied. So the way I overcame it was I put extra bracing in all of the corners of the cabinets. I used pocket screws on the outside because that was going to be covered with the plywood. Got a, a nice amount of screws in there so that it would hold. And then I just used uh, inch and five-eighths drywall screws, pre-drilled the front part, and uh, when I got to their house, I was able to pull all of that in, and it's nice and, nice and flat. I was able to put the, the foot rail on. Uh, also, as, as a... Uh, okay, there's another shot of the, uh, the top. Okay, there's the, uh, the, the big piece, the eight-foot piece, which was bowed. Okay, now I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, okay. My original plan was to pocket screw from the inside, and then I figured, how am I going to get that whole thing together at their house? So uh, I just felt that it would be an impossible task to pocket screw from the inside. So what I finally wound up doing was I got a, or went back to Monteith and I got a nice corner molding, a nice decorative corner molding that covered the joint. So I uh, got an extended pipe clamp, top and bottom, clamped the whole thing together, and then I ran every six inches drywall screws right into the front. So it tied the whole thing together and then I covered it with that corner molding. And it really looked nice. It really looked nice. Okay, and this is the finished product. Oh, yes. So the, this is where the corner molding went on each side. Um, I had to cut out the, the, they had molding on the wall, so I had to cut that out because they wanted this up flush against the wall. Did you anchor it somehow? <laughs> big waste of time. It's not it's heavy enough. And yeah, it's not moving. It's wide enough so yeah. it wasn't too it's, off. No, I was I was thinking about that, but it it took three of us. We we made three trips from my house to their house to bring it over in pieces, and it was three trips. 
it took three of us to carry the top and I don't know, it had to weigh at least 100 pounds, maybe more, just the top alone was massive. Uh, oh, in the interim, this added a little excitement to it. I had a double hernia operation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm carrying it? No. The week uh, before. Just thinking about it. The week before. Now, I, I told them that I was going to schedule for surgery the, the beginning of January. And I said that, you know, I'm going to not be able to lift anything heavy for six weeks. So in that interim, that's when I did most of the finishing. I was able to, after the first week, the first week was pretty bad. The foot rail you were talking about, I guess that... That's coming to a theater near you. <laughs> okay, there's the, uh, there's the, the foot rail. Uh, I didn't include that in the price because there's such a, a variation in the uh, in the price of those things, uh, it comes like in a brass, stainless steel. This is uh, oiled bronze, which was like triple the price of, of the other products, and that's what they went with. You make those standard eight shelves. Are they standard eight foot? Or they're eight. Or they special? Eight, no, eight foot, and then I had to cut it. Uh, so you had to order two. Or? Well, no, there was. Uh, we ordered a five foot and, a, and an eight foot. And uh, that's less than eight feet, so I had to cut it. And they said you could cut it on a chop saw. Uh, you know, wow. <laughs> Whose chop saw? Yeah, it's it's not yours. Carbide blades going everywhere. Carbide blades going everywhere. Your neighbor's chop saw. <laughs> there were sparks flying. I, I, uh, I just